Um, one of the things I'd like to see and I'm seeing is more diversity in the Republican Party. This is the most diverse class of Republicans ever elected in the history of the United States Congress. We have more women than were ever elected before, more Hispanic members ever elected before, more African American members in modern history. That was coastal elite Sean Hannity saying that he's seeing more diversity in the Republican Party as the camera pans a room that's 99% white. I guess ethnic people weren't invited. While Representative Elise Stefanik provided details on the brown people we don't see. It's been said before, but Republicans downplay race and diversity until they gain some and want to use it to promote the party. Well, when the new Congress came into session this month, there were more black Republicans serving together on Capitol Hill than at any point since 1877. The total number being five. The vast majority, 80% of racial and ethnic minority members in the new Congress are Democrats, while 20% are Republicans. This split is similar to the previous Congress when 83% of non-white lawmakers were Democrats and 17% were Republicans. Overall, 133 senators and representatives today identify as Black, Hispanic, Asian American, American Indian, or Alaska Native, according to a Pew Research Center analysis of data from the Congressional Research Service. This number has nearly doubled in the two decades since the 108th Congress in 2005, which had 67 minority members. There are nearly 60 black Democrats in the House currently. And to be fair, for the first time since the 1870s, there are now four or five black Republican representatives in the House. It's actually a number so low that I refuse to count it. But I'll get back to this in a minute. 12 senators are members of a racial or ethnic minority group. Four of the 12 non-white senators are Republicans. Tim Scott of South Carolina is black, and Marco Rubio of Florida and Ted Cruz of Texas are both Hispanic. Mark Wayne Mullen of Oklahoma, a member of the Cherokee Nation, is the first American Indian to serve in the Senate in almost two decades. Despite growing racial and ethnic diversity on Capitol Hill, members of Congress are still far more likely than the overall U.S. population to be non-Hispanic white. 75% versus 59%. This gap is about as wide as it was in 1981, when 94% of members of Congress were white compared with 80% of the U.S. population. For years, Republicans have struggled to recruit and elect black candidates, but heading into this year's primary election season, national Republicans boasted that more than 80 black Republicans, a historical feat for the party, were running on the GOP ticket. After the primaries, only 31 black Republicans actually made it onto the ballot, according to a 538 analysis of primary race winners. Almost all of those candidates lost. Are Republican voters not voting for black candidates? Since 1870, when Senator Hiram Rebels of Mississippi and Representative Joseph Rainey of South Carolina became the first African Americans to serve in Congress, a total of 186 African Americans have served as U.S. representatives, delegates, or senators. In fact, seven black politicians served in the U.S. House together during the 43rd and 44th Congresses, thanks to the newfound political power of emancipated men in the South, who got the right to vote in 1870. That changed though, following the end of the Reconstruction era and beginning in 1877, black representation significantly declined. You know, seeing how the Republican Party of the 19th century had more black representation in Congress than the Democratic Party at that time, what with its adherence to emancipation and the advancement of black folks under post-Civil War Reconstruction, and this representation has since flipped, it's almost like the party switched. Like, when today's GOP claims they're the party of Lincoln and that the Democrats, for example, started the Confederacy and the KKK, this may be why they avoid saying that the Confederates and the Klan, you know, those who enslaved black people, regardless of party affiliation, were largely conservative. I mean, if these two parties were indeed the same parties as they were before, then why don't their political candidates and voting bloc reflect this? After all, the KKK and Confederates are still firmly on the right, right? Whatever, congrats to the black Republicans who are new to the House of Representatives, all five of you. For Rebel HQ, I'm Jeff Wiggins. My architect knows Japanese. For more from the Young Turks, stay right here. To see additional content from yours truly, click on the Jeff Wiggins hashtag. You can also find me on my YouTube channel, We Gonna Be All Right. Thanks for watching.